writing Puppet modules. In this section we will learn about Puppet modules, we start using Puppet classes to group our resource types, we learn about best practices when writing Puppet modules and we create an NTP module to manage the NTP service. Modules In this video we are going to take a look at what Puppet modules are and how Puppet modules actually work. Prerequisites for this video Video 1 – Installing Puppet So VM1 should be running and you should be connected with SSH. So what are Puppet modules? Modules are a way to bundle and distribute Puppet code. Modules contain code, so many Puppet manifests and configuration data for these manifests. Most of the time when you're using Puppet you're going to work with modules. So for example there's Puppet Forge, where you can download pre-built modules that come with Puppet. So most of the time you're going to use Puppet Forge for downloading modules. And modules are also how Puppet finds classes and types. You can create modules with the command Puppet Module Generate then you need to specify prefix and then the module name. The prefix is actually used on the Puppet Forge, so you, when you would like to publish um, your Puppet module. This is used because, for example, more than one organization um, could publish a module called Apache. And the prefix is used to um, separate these two Apache modules. So how does a Puppet module look like? A module is basically just a directory tree with a specific layout. There's the module name. This is the directory where the Puppet module resides. So what subdirectories are in a Puppet module? First of all, and the most important, is the Manifests folder. This folder stores all the Puppet module manifests. And when Puppet would like to use a module, it searches for a file init.pp in this manifest folder when loading a module. So when you're using the Apache module, the Puppet module loader searches in Apache directory, inside the manifests subdirectory, and then it looks for a file init.pp. There's a files directory where you can store files that nodes may use. So they are downloadable on the node that is using the module. There's a template directory where you can store custom templates used within the module. We are going to talk about templates and how you can use them in one of the next videos. There's a lib directory which contains Puppet plugins, so your Puppet is also extensible. There's a facts.d directory we can store custom internal facts. Facts are used within Puppet to collect data about the system. Eventually there's a spec directory which is used to store unit tests for the module. So there's a tool available called RSpec Puppet for writing unit tests for a Puppet module. There's a functions directory which stores custom functions written in the Puppet language. And finally there's a types directory for type analysis. Just a few more words about init.pp. Always remember when Puppet loads a module, it searches for the file init.pp in the directory module name manifests init.pp. As in our Apache example, if we are using the Apache module, the module name is Apache, then it looks for a manifests directory inside the Apache directory and then it searches for init.pp. This is the entry point into the module. This entry point must also contain a class, we are going to talk about classes in the next video, with the same name as the module. So let's now look at an example. I'm already connected to VM1. I'm going to open a root shell with sudo i. Now we are going to create our first Puppet module. I'm going to use the command puppet module generate. 
as prefix I'm going to use learning and then I'm going to call it first module. First module. So now the Puppet module tool is going to ask me a few questions about this module I'm going to generate. I'm just going to accept the defaults. So this is version 0.1.0. Who wrote this module? That's me. I'm going to use the Apache license and a short description, a first module. We have no source code repository currently and there's also no link for learning about this module. So and there you can see met metadata that is generated for this module. This metadata is also available on the Puppet Forge is you're going to, uh, when you're going to upload your Puppet module. And I would like to generate the module. So now Puppet module generate, generate the directory first module. Let's go inside this and look around. There's our manifests directory. When we go inside the manifests directory, you can see there's already a file called init.pp, which is the entry point into our module. So let's now modify init.pp. There's some example documentation for the module. We are not going to modify right now. And here's the class definition, first module. As I told you before, in init.pp there always has to be one class with the same name as the module. Our module is called first module, so here's the class first module. So, and to make this a little bit more usable, we're going to notify, we're going to print the message. Hello from your first puppet module. Where's the colon? So we're just printing a message inside our first module. I'm going to save and quit this now. And I'm going back to the root directory. I'm currently in the directory slash root. Here's our first module. And when we now would like to apply our module, we have first we have to create a file because Puppet classes are not automatically included in the catalog. Uh, we cover this topic in uh, the next video when we talk about Puppet classes. So we create a test.pp file and we're going to include first module. So this is going to include the first module inside our catalog. So Puppet searches for a directory named first module, then for a directory called manifests and inside manifests for the init.pp file, which contains our default class first module. When we now run Puppet apply, we also have to specify the module path so, the, so Puppet is able to find our module. I'm going to use Puppet apply dash dash module path equals slash root and I would like to apply test.pp. So the puppet apply command is now going to search for modules in the slash root directory where our first module is located and we're going to apply test.pp which is including first module inside the catalog. And you can see we successfully printed the message hello from your first puppet module. When you would like to learn more about module fundamentals, please look at the documentation at docspuppet.com. Thank you very much for watching.